This is just an introductory picture of the entire item as it is at the moment. Use the pause control to read the various labels, but some of these things are going to be covered as we go through the, the uh, coming descriptions. Starting off here with the uh, what I call the main bearing block, which slides up and down the main shaft. Uh, the annotation on there tells you pretty much what you need to know. It's uh, two by two by one, which I cut off uh, from a piece of plate that I had. And this is boring out to accept the main bearing, which is quite a large one. Oh, and just to mention the 0 0.650 at the rear of the bearing cup, that becomes a larger size later. And we'll go into that later when I come to the uh, slight change I had to make. This now is with the bearing in place and the bearing inner diameter, which is uh, 675, 5 eighths, is a little bit large and we'll see later that we have to make a collar to uh, slide over the copper pipe to the main shaft. Now the block has been turned and uh, re-centered in the four jaw chuck and uh, it was built, drilled through originally, just over a quarter inch or so, and then on this side, the bearing pocket is being produced to take one of the two lateral bearings, as we're calling them, which will attach to a yoke or stirrup for uh, one of the planes of movement. Uh, this is shown purely so you can see the small lateral bearing in place. It has an ID of 6mm. We'll uh, describe a bit more about that later. This is a short length cut off some aluminum bar, which is uh, called the handle block. And this is going to receive a skateboard bearing, which may at a later time have to be modified because actually there's going to be quite a lot of leverage on it. Handle block now with the bearing in place and through the bearing is an eight millimeter Allen head bolt. And this is going to be used to fix to the handle. Uh, it's not quite sharp, I'm afraid, but it uh, gives you some idea of what's going on. Okay, we'll move away from the lathe now. This is a collection of parts that are basically what we use for the, the uh, gimbal. The only thing missing from that is the yoke or stirrup piece, which we'll show a bit later on. So from the left, we've got the bolt and skate bearing, which goes into the handle bearing block. Uh, we've got two lateral bearings on the main block, we've got the main bearing. Now there's a collar which turned out not to be adequate and we'll describe a bit more about that later on. That was made as a sleeve or collar to go inside the ID of the main bearing. And uh, the 6mm ground bar, well it's rod isn't it? 6mm ground rod for uh, skate bearings which was some, again something I had. Very convenient. This is just a look at the uh, blocks with bearings in place and the uh, six millimeter ground rod. Not quite sharp this picture but I think it'll do. So the handle bearing block is shown here and that's now drilled and tapped to take a couple of bolts for fixing to the yoke or stirrup. On the right there is a what I'm calling a basically a slip collar or a shaft adjustment collar working on the principle here of not having a telescoping shaft as with many glide cams this is using a shall we say a support collar that can be moved up or down to find a balance point and uh, there's a small wing bolt which has been made to go in there it acts as a set screw but there's a little leather pad on the inside to avoid damage to the uh, copper pipe. Again a bit unsharp, sorry, but just another look at the uh, handle bearing block and the bearing with the bolt through it. Just another angle really. Okay now a view of the gimbal. We've made a yoke or stirrup, call it what you like. Um, the uh, nine millimeter ground stock has to be cut into short pegs, which is uh, all that's needed for securing the yoke to the lateral bearings. 
So now we've got the yoke pinned to the lateral bearings. Uh, the piece of copper pipe is just a stubby piece for checking things out. You can see the collar, hopefully, around the copper pipe, which is inside the bearing inner, and uh, that has to be changed. More, more, more of that later. Another view of the gimbal unit assembled, this time showing the uh, slip collar with the wing set screw. It might be noticed that the slip collar will bear directly on the main block and that's going to produce friction which is going to stop the main center bearing from rotating properly. More, more of that later, this was something which was realized after trying to get clever, it had to be corrected. The spare holes in the yoke are just there in case they might be of use at a later stage to uh, adjust sensitivity, whatever. Just a different view of the assembly. This shows the main bearing in place. And uh, effectively, this is upside down. It will be realized later that the slip collar is actually above the gimbal when it's in use. This is now the right way up as it would be in use. All the parts are marked again, so uh, use the pause if you want to look in more detail. Now let's put some things together. This is the unit basically without the bottom weight T-bar. We've also added a macro slider with quick fit device on top. As you can see the slip collar sits above the main block and therefore predetermines the height at which the gimbal operates. Schedule 40 handle, very basic, hope to improve on that later but it's functional for the time being. Now onto the uh, T-bar weight unit. This is 8 inches at the moment from a piece of uh, thin bar. Spare holes are made, again just in case they're of use. We're using the fender washers for weights doesn't really matter what's used as long as it's convenient. You might note also that the copper end stop in the middle is used as an attachment to the main shaft. The top end uses the same approach with a copper end stop to fit the macro slider base. More of a side view of the base weight unit, which should be more or less self-explanatory. Pause the picture if you want to look at the other details. Now to try and explain the correction I've made due to an earlier error. The lower right next to the bearing is the new collar. Uh, it'll be noticed that the collar is not just like a short piece of tube, it's actually two diameters. So the inner diameter is made to suit a sliding fit on the copper pipe. The uh, smaller outer diameter fits the bearing inner and the larger diameter is what will go through the now enlarged hole in the main block and that will protrude by about a sixteenth or 332 to bear on the slip collar. This means then that the gimbal is taking the weight of the unit above but such that the main bearing can rotate, <laughs> which it wouldn't have done before. Just a close-up view of the main bearing with the new collar inserted. This is basically a top view. So what you can see at the top there will go through the larger enlarged hole in the uh, main block and protrude to bear on the slip collar, thus allowing rotation of the bearing properly. Very similar to an earlier picture here, except that the uh, new version collar is in place. Not that you can really tell much difference. This is a more useful modification view. It shows the new collar coming through the main block and protruding by about uh, 16th or a bit more. With the bearing into new collar now correctly taking top load, some means had to be found to secure the bearing in its uh, housing in the main block. 
and this is just showing a spring retainer which was fortunately found the right size and uh, keeps that bearing in place. The uh, gimbal assembly again now but with the modification and uh, you should be able to see that the new collar protrudes by that small amount so that it can bear on the slip collar. Similar view but the slip collar is now as close as it can be to the main block and uh, you might just be able to see there's a slight cap. This means that the load goes from the slip collar to the new collar into the bearing and the bearing can rotate. Just a general view of the unit now, one or two points to make. The initial single macro slider has now got a second one attached to 90 degrees so that we've got forward and backward adjustment for the camera and side to side so no, no need to add balance weights. Uh, there's a rubber band underneath the gimbal unit that is purely a convenience so that when you let go of the gimbal unit it doesn't slide down very far. Uh, beyond that you can pause and just look at the other labels in case you need to. That last picture was actually a three-quarter view. This one is a side view. The camera's got its uh, viewfinder extended, although you can't see it very well. Now a bit more detail of the top end. Mostly self-explanatory if you look at the uh, various labels. It's planned ultimately to uh, paint all the metal pieces and finish them off a bit more. The next stage is going to be testing in use. So there's a lot of work to be done on finding the ultimate balance. And uh, when we get to that stage, there'll probably be another video, hopefully, with some uh, actual footage. It's hoped that this will actually perform pretty well once it's balanced. And that's the hard bit.